Aloha and welcome to our video on pressure centers and winds. As promised, in this video we'll talk about how high and low pressures create winds. Um, in here we will describe what air pressure patterns are within cyclones and anticyclones and explain how unequal heating of the Earth's surface affects the atmosphere. Okay, let's take a look at this picture showing us cyclonic and anticyclonic winds. Um, first and foremost, we want to refer to anticyclonic is always going to be referred to as a high pressure system and a cyclonic is always going to be a low pressure system. So our storms, our tropical cyclones and things of that nature generally form in low pressure systems. So that's why we're going to call it a cyclonic system here. And our highs are the opposite, so it's going to be the anticyclonic condition. Now on our map here, you can see that we have all of these different lines. These are our isobars. These are showing us areas where pressure is going to be the same. And notice that my pressure is going to decrease to the low and then it will increase back up to the high. So we can see 116 going down here to a low and then we can see an increase of it coming back up here to the high. So what we'll notice is that winds are going to traditionally blow from the high pressure system to a low pressure system. And the reason why is if we look at what's going on in these environments. So let's start with a cyclone, a low pressure system. Because we have a low pressure system, remember this is where we're going to see rising air. So it's going to be a little bit warmer probably. And that rising air, as the air rises up here, is going to create a gap down below. And that gap to the low is going to be filled up by the surrounding air blowing in. So that's where we see this cyclonic flow going on here, where we're going to have this air all blowing in towards the middle of a low pressure. But because it's slightly warmer, it's going to rise up. And then above we have this... I've divergence above okay so the air is going to flow in along the ground go up and then it's going to be spread out and here's our low pressure system okay and that's our cyclonic flow so we can see the wind blowing in towards the lows okay so that helps us predict air direction now in an anticyclonic or a high pressure system we notice that the pressure the air is coming in from the high so it's blowing in high it's all converging into this area which is going to force a down draft of the air now remember when air lifted up it got cooler and we formed clouds as air comes down we're going to see a dissipation of the clouds so normally in a high pressure system we're going to have clear skies in a low pressure system we're going to have the clouds and that's where we're going to get our rain so high pressure is normally clear weather, low pressure is going to be cloudy weather. Now as this air is converging here, it's going to get to the ground and it's going to dissipate out from there. So if I have a high and a low nearby, you can see that my air, and we'll do it in blue here, is going to blow into the high area, which is going to cause it to come down. It's going to be a little cooler when it hits the ground. It's going to blow over to a low system where we're going to experience this updraft and then we'll have that air transfer and we can see these cycles but on the surface where we are is where we'll experience this wind blowing from the high to the low and that's how we get wind patterns for the most part. Now highs and lows are going to be regional what we want to look at is what happens worldwide and if we take our example here and our key here is it's a non-rotating earth so if the Earth wasn't rotating, if it was just sitting there, we would get more energy, more heat coming to the equator, so it would be hot, which is what we see. So now as we heat up that air, it's going to cause that air to rise, which is what it'll do to the end of the atmosphere. And then once it gets there, it's going to bend either north or south. As it travels in the atmosphere, it's going to cool off until it gets to the poles, where it'll all converge there, and then at that point, it will plummet down to the surface and then it'll spread out and come to the surface, blow down over towards the equator where it'll heat back up and we get that whole cycle continuing again. And we can see that in our little cycle diagrams over here where you have the heating of the air here causing it to, over here we have heating and that's going to cause this air to rise. As it rises, it's going to spread out and cool off in the atmosphere until it gets so cold it'll plummet down when it plummets down, it spreads out and it's going to travel over the earth. It's going to warm up, warm up, warm up, finally get warm enough that they're lifting. And that's how we can see this cycle continuing here. Okay, but as you know, the earth does rotate. And because it rotates, one of the side effects is going to be this Coriolis effect. So what we'll notice is we have here 
at the equator we have an area called the doldrums and the reason it's called the doldrums is because there's not a lot of wind going on there what's happening is, is we're warming it up and at the doldrums the wind would basically be blowing upwards so there's not a lot of wind there now as it's going and as it's blowing across the earth is going to turn it's going to cause it to bend this way and as it bends this way it's going to heat up and rise so our air is rising up here at the equator it's going to hit the upper level of the atmosphere cool and it's going to dissipate and spread out so we can see it rising up here and then it's going to spread out this way as it does so it's going to get cold and as it gets cold it's going to drop down and we notice that this happens at about what we call the horse latitudes at about 30 degrees north at 30 degrees north it's cooled off enough it's going to start dropping down and then when it hits the earth it's going to go one of two ways it can either go south or it can travel north under both of those circumstances it's going to heat up again and as it heats up eventually it'll rise back up so we can have this one this Hadley cell here at the tropics where we're seeing how at the equator it's going up it's going to travel up to a higher about 30 degrees latitude where it'll plummet back down and then it'll run along the surface and create this cell in this area on the northern hemisphere in the southern hemisphere we call these the trade winds now they were called the trade winds because we could send the boats to the west using these trade winds and that's kind of our direction and that's why they were named that now if we go above we have this other area here where it plummets down at the horse latitudes and it can warm up as it's traveling north and it'll rise back up and as it rise back up we can get this cell going on here where we see the same thing they're going warm up it's going to come here travel to here and it'll come back down now here as the wind is blowing north across the surface it's going to bend a little bit to the right like we said the Coriolis will do and that's how we end up with our westerly winds and if you notice here's the United States we're going to have most of our weather in the United States because of these westerlies will travel from the west to the east so if you watch storms move they'll go from west to east now we have a little bit of rising here going on as it does so it'll either travel back this way to the horse latitudes or it's going to travel up to the pole it'll cool as it comes down it'll blow from the pole along the surface that's going to make it turn into our polar easterlies so you can see how we have polar easterlies then we have our westerlies and then we will have our trade winds and the exact same thing happens on the southern hemisphere as well so these are how we get our global wind patterns so if I was sailing and I wanted to go from east to west, I might head down south and sail in the tropics that way. But if I wanted to go from the west to the east, I might sail up a little bit more into my mid-latitudes and that would carry me across that way using the general winds. And our airplanes will do the same thing. So putting it all together, we can have our map here. And what our map is going to show me is we'll have regions of highs and regions of lows. Over here, we have a high pressure system. You can see it there. We'll have another high pressure system here and then we'll have our low pressure system over here okay so we have our lows and our highs and remember the wind's going to blow in the general direction from the high to the low from our high to our low so that's how we're going to get wind patterns going on so this will give us a kind of a global circulation for july how it works out okay so that's it for our video as always good luck on your quiz and we'll see you in the next video